The middle class is disappearing. This isn't fear-mongering. It's happening right now. In just two months of 2025, 51 tech companies have announced layoffs, leaving over 12,800 people without jobs. The tech industry unemployment rate jumped from 3.9% in December 2024 to 5.7% in January. These aren't blue-collar workers getting laid off. These are high-earning, suburban-living middle-class professionals who've been driving America's consumer economy. AI is the driving force behind this transformation. It's not just replacing manual labor anymore. It's massively disrupting white-collar work. Programmers, designers, analysts, translators, these once stable middle-class careers are being redefined by algorithms. Here's the key issue. Middle-class consumer spending accounts for 68.3% of America's GDP. When this group shrinks, who's going to support our entire economic system? How exactly is AI changing the job landscape? What kind of social division will this create? We'll start with the current wave of layoffs and track this tech revolution that's reshaping our social structure. In January 2025, Meta's CEO Mark Zuckerberg announced plans to cut about 5% of employees, roughly 3,600 people. His reasoning was direct. AI can now handle most of these employees' work. Around the same time, Amazon and Microsoft made similar announcements. This wave of layoffs is completely different from before. In the past, companies laid people off because of shrinking business, cost pressures, or economic downturns. Now these tech giants are cutting jobs while their business is growing and profits are soaring. Take Amazon, for example. Their net profits grew over 200% in 2024, but employee wages only increased by 1.8%. The key change is how targeted these layoffs are. The chairman of Proya's parent company, Shanghai Jawa, directly announced in a group chat, legal department, 50% cuts, customer service, 95% cuts, only keeping employees who can work with AI. They even proposed eliminating keyboards, having employees communicate with AI entirely through voice and mouse. This technological replacement is spreading beyond the tech industry. Statistics show that over 150,000 tech workers have lost their jobs in the first two months of 2025. That's 54% more than the 98,000 from the same period last year. These companies are laying off workers while massively investing in AI projects. Microsoft laid off 15,000 people while promising to invest $80 billion in AI development. To companies, AI's value is rapidly surpassing human employees. When an AI system can work 24-7, doesn't need vacation time, and won't demand raises, where's the advantage for human workers? The answer to this question directly determines which jobs will disappear and which skills still have value. A programmer with 10 years of experience needs eight hours to write complex code. Now AI does it in 30 minutes with fewer errors. This isn't hypothetical, this is happening right now in Y Combinator revealed a shocking statistic. Among their latest batch of startups, 25% of companies have code bases that are 95% AI generated. This means a company that used to need 20 programmers might now only need two or three AI operators to maintain the same output. It's not just programmers getting hit. A UK creators union survey found that one third of translators and one fourth of illustrators have already lost work because of AI. Even creative industries can't escape. Traditional professional skills are losing value across the board. The education system can't keep up with the pace of change. 2024 data shows 44% of American college graduates work jobs that don't require a college degree. 52% of recent graduates reported salaries below $50,000 annually. Meanwhile, private university tuition averages $39,400 per year. Public universities cost $11,200. This mismatch isn't accidental. When AI can complete data analysis in seconds and generate market reports in minutes, graduates who spent four years learning these skills suddenly find their expertise has almost no competitive value in the job market. Even traditionally safe professions are getting hit. 
The World Economic Forum's 2025 report shows 41% of employers plan to reduce staff due to AI automation. This isn't just one industry's problem, it's a systemic change across the entire job market. Those professional skills that middle-class workers once took pride in are becoming historical baggage. When large numbers of skilled middle-class professionals discover their abilities are no longer needed by the market, their incomes inevitably drop. What impact will this individual income decline have on the entire economic system? The American economy follows a basic logic. The middle class earns money, then spends money on houses, cars, and lifestyle upgrades, driving overall economic growth. This group's consumer spending accounts for 68.3% of America's GDP, with 70% coming from middle-income households. This foundation is crumbling. In 1971, 61% of American adults lived in middle-income households. By 2016, that number dropped to 52%. Beijing University's Guanghua research team predicts AI's impact could reduce the middle-income group by another 22 million people. And this isn't just numbers changing, it's the breaking of economic circulation. When programmers, designers, and analysts these core middle-class groups are losing jobs or seeing income drops. Who's going to buy the goods and services that AI produces? Here's a typical example. Tech companies are using AI to dramatically boost production efficiency and profits are soaring. But they're simultaneously cutting large numbers of middle-income positions. The result? Products are getting cheaper but fewer people can afford them. This overproduction, underconsumption economic paradox is intensifying. The quality of replacement jobs is declining. 36% of American workers are now doing some form of freelance work, with 60% relying on it as their primary income. But these jobs generally lack social security and stable income. Many people work over 50 hours a week, but earn only minimum wage equivalent the traditional middle-class consumption model. Long-term spending plans supported by stable income. This is breaking down. When more and more people shift from monthly salaries to per-project pay, from long-term planning to short-term survival, the entire consumer market logic changes. Economists warn that if this trend continues, America could face a deflationary spiral. Declining consumer demand leads to more corporate layoffs, which further weakens purchasing power, creating a vicious cycle. At that point, even if AI can produce perfect products, they might sit in warehouses because there's no buying power. Is everyone a loser in this massive change? Actually, a small group of people is becoming the biggest winners. In non-tech industries, employees with AI skills are seeing explosive salary growth. 28% higher than their peers on average, nearly $18,000 more per year. These AI users have become the scarce resource of our new era, but these opportunities are extremely unequal. LinkedIn and Microsoft reports show 75% of knowledge workers are already using AI tools, but very few can actually tame AI to create real value. Most people are passive AI users, not active AI controllers. Geography has become a key dividing factor. San Francisco and New York, these tech centers, are capturing 65% of new AI-related positions, while Ohio, Michigan, and other traditional manufacturing states continue bleeding jobs. An AI training engineer in Silicon Valley might earn hundreds of thousands annually, while an unemployed factory worker in the Rust Belt might only be able to deliver food. The age gap is widening too. 85% of Generation Z applies AI skills learned in school to their work. But only 14% of adults over 50 have received digital skills training. This means older employees have almost no chance of recovery in this technological shift. Even the gig economy safe haven isn't secure. Uber, DoorDash, and other platforms are heavily investing in autonomous driving and delivery robot technology. Those who downgraded from middle-class to gig economy work might soon find even this option gone. This division is creating a dumbbell-shaped society. One end has a few elites controlling AI resources, earning hundreds of thousands annually. The other end has masses doing unstable work with minimal income. Traditional middle-class is getting squeezed out. 
Even within AI training jobs, there's clear hierarchy. Entry-level trainers do data labeling for $35 per hour. Senior trainers design algorithm models for hundreds of thousands annually. The difference is whether they master the second skill, converting industry know-how into logic that AI can understand. Most traditional middle-class workers face a painful choice. Either break through upward, master AI skills to join the elite few, or adapt downward, accept lower income and working conditions. For most people, the first path is nearly impossible. The second path means completely abandoning middle-class life. Once this division forms, it's very hard to reverse. The barrier to AI skills is much higher than we imagine. It's not about learning to use ChatGPT to become an AI expert. It requires deep understanding of industry logic, knowing how to train AI, how to make AI generate real commercial value. This capability needs time to accumulate, resource investment, and trial and error opportunities. These conditions are exactly what unemployed middle-class workers lack most. The time window is rapidly closing. When more people realize the importance of AI skills, competition will intensify, learning costs will increase, and success probability will decrease. Those still waiting might soon find even downward adaptation opportunities are gone. Society is being reshuffled. The traditional education employment consumption cycle is breaking. New game rules are still being formed through trial and error. In this process, those few who can adapt quickly will reap enormous benefits. While most people might only accept a more unequal social reality. The ultimate question isn't whether AI will change the world, but in this change, which side are you prepared to stand on?